All right, this, this might be the hardest rebuild we've ever done. I know we have the zero overall franchise going. I know we've done some pretty bad teams. But this one might be, like, this actually might be the hardest rebuild we have ever done. Like, just the financial restrictions is going to make it tough. How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we are back with another rebuild. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always, in the comment section, let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys think that Moneyball would really be effective in today's MLB? I don't think it would be. I feel like people are demanding so much money. You know, home runs, power hitters are such a big part of today's baseball. I don't think Moneyball would work. And if you guys are unfamiliar with the concept of the Moneyball rebuild with the 2002-2003 Athletics, the team only spent $41 million on their 25-man roster. So their MLB roster only consisted of players that their salaries totaled up to $41 million. They went up against the Yankees, who their payroll was $125 million. So a third of what the Yankees were doing. So to think that they made the playoffs with a team that you know was only a $41 million uh, salary payroll is kind of incredible to think about. Billy Bean's philosophy for this team was high on base percentage and high OPS. He was, he was thinking, the more players we can get on base, the better chance we have of scoring. So he wanted players who got on base a lot. He was looking for patient hitters, players who could draw walks, players who could hit singles. Basically, you got on base. That's what he wanted. He really wasn't looking for those multi, you know, $20 million players that he would pay to hit home runs. He wanted guys who played small ball, win them games. So what we're going to do today in this rebuild with the Oakland Athletics is we're going to stick to today's rosters. We're not going to use any throwback rosters or anything like that. But what we're going to do is when you look at the roster of the the athletics there i mean there really aren't too many high salaried players chris davis is the most expensive at 16 million dollars a year but when you look at the team i don't think this is a playoff contending team i definitely think there are uh, moves that need to be made and yes farm system is going to be helpful because they are going to be cheaper players but we also need players who are going to help us now so 41 million I don't think is possible in today's MLB standards as you guys can see literally right here Oh wrong way like right here. You guys can see that red bar. It says 95 million That's the salary that we have for our entire organization What I need to do for this challenge this franchise is get it down to 50 million We need to cut it in half and that is the max for the entire rebuild we cannot go over 50 million for the organization salary that means we have to trim the salary quite a bit which means davis soria fires piscotti trinan seminent semian petit estrada profar most likely they're all going to be traded sean Manel, ah, i'm thinking about trading him i'll have to think about it uh he does have quite a bit of trade value and we probably could get a pitcher who's going to be on lower pay for long for like a longer arbitration time for you know i think shamanea might be another player that gets moved so with that being said we showed you guys the mlb roster we are using the most recent writing rosters in the roster vault um yeah let's make some trades there are going to be a bunch of them there are going to be a lot of moves this is not going to be realistic at all it's going to require a lot of trades consistently each season to make sure that we stay within that 50 million budget trade one is going to be for a new left fielder with chris davis leaving we are going to need a new left fielder we're going to go to the orioles for trey mancini a player who his contract isn't going to be that big probably around two million once arbitration hits and he has good hitting stats he's going to be a decent little left fielder slash dh for us next trade is we are getting rid of that big salary of chris davis also the prospects of grant holmes and logan davidson for jose leclerc as dribble cabrera and isaiah kiner falefa Jameson Hanna, Jerickson Pro Profar, and Marcos Brito are going to be traded for Jeff McNeil, our new second baseman, since we're trading away Profar. We're going to the Twins for a little bit of help for a younger and also a cheaper option in Trevin Hildenberger. Again, he'll probably cost around $2 million uh, once his contract like comes up in free agency. We're going to trade away Joaquin Soria and uh austin beck all right we're going for kind of like a long reliever slash possible starter and antonio senzatella for azdrubal cabrera yusmero petit 
and Dustin Fowler. Dole, Mike Fires, and Nick Allen are going to be traded for Dylan Floro of the Dodgers, a cheap, really good bullpen option. One of the better lefties available that we could get for cheap. Jake Diekman, we could always bring him back for like another $2 million next season for Marco Estrada. Basically half the salary. Um, we're, we're really strengthening that bullpen. Daniel Gossett, Jarrell Cotton, and Marcus Semyon for our new shortstop, Paul DeYoung. The thing I like about him is his contract is so like little and it's gonna be little for quite a bit so I, that's why i picked him up and i know he's gonna develop into a really solid hitter robbie grossman steven piscotti and then our catcher sean murphy who's a top prospect but we do have kiner falafa now so i kind of feel like we, we kind of have a younger uh, catcher that we could use for the future for michael conforto gregor blanco and dominic smith i'm thinking dominic smith's going to be a good platoon outfielder slash dh for us and conforto usually hits the ball pretty good um, and he sits around that four million mark with arbitration jake junis is coming to help our starting rotation for chris bassett mike canna and jorge mateo you're probably thinking why i would trade away one of our best shortstop prospects the issue is he doesn't really develop hitting wise until his late 20s and i just can't wait that long uh we need people who are going to help us out right away all right we're going to go for a young catcher in jordan hicks uh jose leclerc's going to be traded he really was just uh going to be tr used as a piece anyways um jose leclerc either does really well or really badly i have a feeling he's going to do really badly for us aaron brooks is also going to be traded and jj schwarz joel Seddon, nick hunley and ryan buckter for robbie erlin we're getting an another lefty um again I feel like Robbie Erlin's a little bit younger. He's going to help us out a little bit long term, a little bit longer than Buckter will. Alrighty, so as you can see, we're at 42 million after all those moves. It gives us 8 million to kind of play with if we ever need to make a deal at the deadline, or even if we have to. I'm kind of saving that space for all the, all the arbitration offers and contract offers that I'm expecting at the end of this year. So let's go take a look at the lineup. Let's go take a look at the pitching rotation for this season. You guys can see we have Montas, Maneas, Junis, or Menea, Junis, Mengden, and Blackburn. Uh, long relief, we have Sensatello. Then we have Trevino, Hildenberger, Floro, Diekman, Hendricks, Erlin, and then Hicks. Our kind of players to look out for for prospects are Puck and Lozardo. And then when we look at the lineup, you guys can see this is what we're working with. McNeil, Conforto, Chapman, Mancini, Olsen, De Jong, Pinder, Kiner Falefa, and then Loriano. So McNeil, he'll probably run around one around two million come next season. Conforto is probably going to be about four or five million. He's going to be kind of the big bulk of our contracts, along with De Jong. I'm going to try to get Chapman to stay within this low arbitration for as long as possible, along with Matt Olson and Trey Mancini. These ones are going to be difficult to kind of keep low. Chad Pinder might be a player that we look to move on, uh, depending on what his arbitration uh, results are. I, uh, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, kind of the same thing. We're going to have to keep moving players as they keep like going up in salary cap space. Uh, so it's it's going to be really, really tough. Uh, we don't really have too many prospects. That's why we're going to focus on the draft a little bit. So season one, let's see how things go. I'm, I'm confident we'll make the playoffs. It's just, I don't know how many players we're going to be able to keep after this season. Season one, the draft went pretty poorly. Gus Stocker, 71 overall, 81 potential. Isn't too bad. Uh, he could be a good little replacement for like the future. But outside of that, we do have Francisco Navarro, 65 overall, 90 potential. Um, and the rest, we have a couple, you know, high 70s potential. Nothing too special. At the deadline, we're going to trade for Andrew Chafin. Jake Diekman just isn't cutting it. Um, so I'd rather have a, a little bit more consistent lefty. So hopefully that works out for us. Alrighty, and Antonio Sanzatella is kind of struggling a bit this season. Um, he's at like a 7 ERA. Frankie Montas is struggling as well. He's got like a 6 ERA. We're going to trade for a little bit more solidified pitcher in Trevor Williams, who has arbitration for the next three years as well. So we won't have to worry about paying him too much. Season 1, and we are a postseason team by the uh, the wild card spot. So we finished 92-70. and 70. We're taking on the Red Sox, so it's definitely going to be a tough, a, a tough, a tough game to get past um jeff mcneil hit 341 and matt olsen had the most walks let's take a look for awards silver slugger for jeff mcneil so let's take a look let's see how things did i mean on the bench dominic smith 275 not not bad at all chris owens 259 263 for our catcher jeff or josh fegley um jeff mcneil 
Amazing. 341, 24 homers, and 94 RBIs. Great pickup. I'm hoping we can keep him for the cheap because he's a great leadoff hitter. Conforto, same thing. He's looking like a very solid addition to the team. 20 plus home runs, 80 plus RBIs, good average and on base percentage. I'm hoping we can keep this arbitration low. Matt Chapman. This one's going to be tough to keep cheap. Um, good thing we got arbitration for the next three seasons, but 40 homers, 118 RBIs, just gross numbers. Um, Matt Olson, 38 homers, 99 RBIs. He's going up in overall and potential, which is great to see. Um, Trey Mancini hit 250. Potential starting to go down a little bit, so he will be a player I keep my eye on. We could always maybe move Dominic Smith to left field. Um, maybe trade Mancini for somebody um, since he could be a little expensive if his arbitration goes up quite a bit. DeYoung, 38 homers, 118 RBIs, almost 300 average. Awesome. Pinder, almost 250. Not the best, not the worst, but I mean, I'm not going to complain about it. We'll have to see what his uh, arbitration is. Kiner Falefa, 240, 11 homers, 42 RBIs. Not terrible. Um, and then Ramon Laureano, very, very solid season. Very solid season. Let's take a look at the pitching. Manea, 388. Would hope for it to be a little bit better. We're going to have to see what arbitration does. If he has, if he pushes into the fours or fives, we may look to trade him. Trevor Williams, uh, 3.8 ERA. So a little bit on the higher side. But again, uh, arbitration should keep him low. So we should be okay. Uh, Blackburn, I think, is going to be one where arbitration will keep him low. So hopefully he continues to develop and we can keep his pay low. Uh, Mangden and Junis, these kind of were all the same. Um, Logan Verrett took over the long relief role. Didn't do amazing, but oh well. Trevino looks solid. Hildenberger solid. Floro amazing. Chafin meh. Uh, Hendricks not too, uh, you know, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Erland two sixty six and Jordan Hicks amazing stuff, amazing stuff. So our bullpen looks very, very solid. I don't think we have too many um, uh, prospects to look out for. Really, just the two pitchers and Lazardo, who's up to a seventy five. And AJ Puck, who is a 68. Let's continue. Let's get into it. Let's see how this game against the Red Sox goes. We're going to quick sim it, quick manage, whatever you want to call it. We are going to be playing at Fenway. Um, we're going to go Trevor Williams on the hill. Let's get into it. Single for McNeil. Okay, first and second, no outs. Come on, guys. Really, we got to take advantage of those opportunities. We are going against Chris Sale. All right, looking at their lineup, everything looks the same. It looks like the standard Red Sox lineup. All righty. I mean, they do have one more hit than us, so can we get something going? Mm. Okay. Come on, guys. We need, we need, why is this on bunt? A triple? Sack fly? Perfect. We take the lead. Perfect. First and second. Oh. Dang it. All right, come on, guys. Let's keep going. Let's get something going here. De Jong against Workman. Chapman. Mancini. All right, we're going to go to the bullpen in the eighth. We're going to go to Hendricks. Perfect. Conforto gets on base. Pinder. Loriano singles first and second. One out. Falefa. That's what I'm talking about. Not known for his power, but I will take it for sure. Base is loaded for Olsen. Nothing happens there, but we're not going to take any chances. We're going to go to Hicks. Please don't. Don't hurt me like this. There we go. We're taking on the Yankees. Great outing by Trevor Williams. Amazing outing. So let's just let's move Manea there. Let's move. Boom. Yeah, let's go like that. Let's go like that. So let's get into it. Let's see how things go. Game one, we lose. Game two, we lose. So facing elimination. Let's let's get into it. Quick manage once again. We are home at Ricky Henderson Field. Trevor Williams is going to be on the mound. Let's see how things go. Looking at the Yankees lineup. Again, looks pretty standard uh, for a Yankees lineup. Double play gets us out of it. Perfect. Double. Matt Chapman, two run bomb. Okay. Okay, we got a single there. Loriano, nothing. Mm. Let's get out of that. Perfect. All right, come on, Olsen gets on. Mancini, first and second. 
We got to take advantage of those. No outs, first and second. We got to score there. McNeil gets on. First and second, one out. See, like right here, we got to do something with it. And of course, we don't. We're letting Stanton steal bases now. Double play. All right. Let's go to... Where are we in the... Ooh. Seventh, we'll go to Trevino. That's unfortunate. Home run there. McNeil, first and second, one out. Come on, guys. Hmm. All right, ninth pitching change. Jordan Hicks is coming in. Jordan Hicks, you had one job. You had one job, man. Come on. Are you serious? Four runs in the ninth. Really? You, you can't be doing that to me, man. Come on. A double, though. Okay. Okay. A single. Conforto. Bases loaded for Chapman. Grand slam right here. Walk it off. Okay. I'll take the sack fly. And eliminated there. All right. Unfortunate, unfortunate, but let's sim, let's sim to the offseason. Let's get into it. Let's see how things are going. I think season one went well for a team that the budget was 42 million. Really? That's unreal. I think that was a good, that's a good start. Uh, two people retired. Were, they weren't going to be part of the team anyways. Um, negotiations. He didn't do too bad. How much does he want? Two a year? I, I, we can't afford that. Uh, Chris Owings wasn't too bad as a backup. Uh, what does he want? Five a year? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, let's keep this going. All right. Um, 40 man, nobody to worry about. Arbitration. Okay. Um, let's see what we got here. We'll just keep it. We'll keep them low for everybody. Um, as low as possible. Um, contracts wise, we do have quite a bit here. Um, I'm going to offer everybody a contract and once the season starts, then we'll start talking about who we need to trade away, who we added, who we need to kind of trim the salary and stuff like that. Season two, we had to trim around 4 million. I'll, I'll, I'll show you before because I remember the trade. So you guys are going to see we got to trim 4 million off our budget to make it. Um, Trevor Williams got a big increase. Shaman Nail is a player I'm looking to trade because we do have Trevor Williams and a couple other decent looking pitchers. Um, Conforto went up a little bit as well. Not too much. Pinder went up a lot. That was kind of a big thing. And that's why I'm kind of trying to trade Pinder and Manea. So Manea and Pinder are going to make way for that pitcher you just saw, uh, Kyle Freeland. Another player I was looking at to uh, like add to the squad was Yoni Chirinos. Um, decent looking stats and he's got a really good contract. Two million set for the next couple seasons. And that's what's kind of attracting me to this Kyle Freeland deal as well. Um, 1.5 over the next few seasons. So we're gonna add him. Um, I kind of do wanna go for Chirinos. I kind of feel like that's a little bit better of a deal. Ooh, what do we do? We're gonna go Chirinos because we can get a little bit of a bench bat in Luke Voigt. And I think that helps us out a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that. Plus we we clear up five mil in cap spaces, which is what is what we needed. And we get a bench bat. I like that trade a lot better than just going for straight uh, Kyle Freeland. So what we're gonna do here is, boom. Um, the CPU picked up this guy. I wanna trade him. I don't want him in the team. He doesn't look good and he's got an A potential he's going to be worth something so let's see if we can find someone to take this long relief spot for us ben bracewell and lucas sims are going to be traded for julio urias um i looked at scott not scott alexander caleb ferguson and he normally doesn't do well in the long relief role um i do have a feeling that this contract is going to get a little expensive but we do need a long reliever and julio urias is going to be that guy Alrighty, so this is how we're going to look for season two. The only change is Julio Urias is coming into the bullpen next season. I'm hoping that one of these guys in Lazardo, Puck, or Navarro, who we drafted, can help us out. Next, um, we also do have Logan Verrett, who didn't do terribly next season uh, last year, but um, I feel I feel like we, we definitely want to make that push. We're going to need some extra arms. 
Um, so I'm hoping like Lazardo can step in next year because that is going to be a very small contract. And then we don't have to worry about paying, you know, two, three mil for a starter. We can put that money somewhere else. Um, lineup is actually the exact same. We didn't make any changes to it. The only change is we got the bench bat and Luke Voigt now, who I'm going to actually have him DH as our first lefties. That's, that's really about it. So yeah, that's, that's the squad. Not too many changes to season two. Like I said, it's very difficult. Our budget is sitting at exactly 50 million. So we can't really make any changes, which means going into season three, I think is going to be very difficult. We're definitely going to have to move a lot of players out of the club, unfortunately. So hopefully we can make the moves necessary. Let's see how season two plays out. So at the deadline, I don't want to make any trades, but I did forget to mention we did sign the 75 overall guy in uh, free agency. You guys can see free agent is there for roster history. He was in free agency. He looks really good. Hitting stats, not so much, but fielding wise, I'm thinking he's going to be more of a trade piece. Um, we're going to keep him on a minor league deal. We're probably going to be able to trade him for a player in the future. Looking at some of our draft picks, Guy Stocker, his potential is going down a little bit, which is disappointing, but he does have some pop off the bat. So maybe a, a future bench bat for us. Um, so those are kind of the two to look out for, for our squad. Everybody else is doing pretty solid. Um, I don't want to touch the team right now. I do want to show you the draft picks for season two, though, because it went a lot better. We got a 67 overall with 89 potential, uh, a good closer for the future. Forrest Villa, 69 overall. Again, really good potential, 85. Uh, we got a 73 here, an 83 here, and Chris Villarreal. He's a uh, 58 overall, and then a 75 overall. So really solid um, second year draft. Season two, we won the division 106 and 56, taking on the winner of the wild card. And if you're, if you know, we're probably going to lose because of that. So gold glove for Matt Chapman. Let's go take a look at the team pitching rotation. Trevor Williams, unreal numbers. Yoni Chirinos looks like a very good pickup for us. And for 2 million a year, he's going to be a really good, really good addition. Jake Junis, not, not amazing, not terrible. Daniel Mengden's looking like our three. And then we got Paul Blackburn. Julio Urias struggled in the second half of the season. At the deadline, he was sitting at a low three ERA. So something something didn't do too well. Liam Hendricks, 420 ERA. Um, I think his contract's over. So we'll probably let him walk. Probably try to find someone a little bit cheaper. Dylan Floro, not terrible. Chafin, not bad either. Hildenberger's very good. Trevino, very good. Erlin struggled a little bit. And again, I think he does hit free agency this season. He does. I just looked at it. Um... But he'll probably be a player that does get traded or just let walk. We'll probably let him walk because he'll probably want too much. And Jordan Hicks, arbitration, and he's looking like a, our closer. We got to keep him on a, a low contract. Looking at the rest of the team, McNeil is on two and a half for the next couple years. So we're good there. And he hit 300 again. So awesome. Paul DeYoung, he's on a low contract too. He is getting up there a little bit, 4.1 next year. So we may, we may trade him. We may trade him for a different shortstop that's a little bit cheaper. Um, Chapman is probably going to go up in arbitration to like 5 million. So yeah, we're, we're definitely going to have to make some moves. Same with Olsen. His arbitration is going to go up. Conforto hits free agency and he's going to want a lot of money. So we're going to need a new right fielder. Potentially, um, we could probably move like Mancini or Dominic Smith out there, but I kind of have a feeling we're going to need somebody else. Loriano did well. Trey Mancini hit a lot of home runs. Um, Luke Voigt is our DH did quite well. Um, if we can keep that arbitration down, I'll definitely keep him. Um, Kiner Falefa, not amazing, but um, maybe Josh Fagley should be starting. He's a, a better bench bat or, or better hitter in terms of catchers. So we got Luzardo. So potentially we could trade one of our pitchers away and let Luzardo start next season. Um, even Verrett could potentially move into the bullpen. He did do decently well. You know, four and a half ERA. I mean, it's not terrible, but it could be a little bit better. Um, let's go look at that second baseman, Denson. I mean, those hitting stats aren't good, so we're probably going to trade them, which means we probably could get a decent little return for him. Stocker went up a little bit in terms of hitting, so he may be a player I look to bring up as well just because he's going to be a cheap option. But let's get into these postseason. Uh, this postseason, we're taking on the Astros. So game one, we win. Game two, we win. And we actually win in four games so let's get the uh let's get everything set up here so that we have our starters you know lined up correctly 
So the Yankees now. Williams versus Severino. We take the loss. We take another loss. We get that win though. Ooh, maybe a little like comeback. We're facing elimination. Let's go into this quick manage. Let's see how things go. Ricky Henderson field. Um, We're going to go Chirinos because it's looking like Williams is struggling a little bit. So we'll do that. Lineup's going to stay the same. Um, O'Hearn's a new name and Tyro Estrada's a new name for the Yankees from last year. All right, that's a good inning for us. Not hitting wise though. All righty, come on Olsen. Conforto. Okay, we get our first base runner. Nothing comes of it though. Luke Voigt, there we go with the solo shot. Then Paul DeYoung adds two. We got a th three run lead, okay. Just gotta hold it now, Chirinos, come on. Come on, get us out. There we go, perfect. Gets out of that bases loaded jam, that's what I'm talking about. One run scores, all right, Chirinos, you're done. Tie ball game. Um, a righty's up, let's go to Floro. Sack fly, really? <sighs> Yikes. All right. So we're losing by one. I have faith in the team, though. They're going to get us. They're going to get us back into it. Come on. Single. That's how we start it. Come on. A fly out. McNeil. Hmm. All right. Let's go to Trevino here. Boom. Perfect. All right. Bottom eight. We need something here. Come on. Nothing really. Just went one inning too much with Chirino. So that's I, <sighs> mm, the Yankees defeat the Nationals, so we're close. We're, we're inching closer with this with this Moneyball squad. Let's do one more season. Let's see if we can make make that World Series. Are you looking at exclusive negotiations? Let's just see what they want. He wants too much. We we just we can't afford it. Um, Chafin maybe if he wants a little like he wants a big like a long term deal. We can't like we I don't really want to do that. Josh Fegley, what about like a, a one year like two? I'd be I could do that one year two. Actually, realistically, let's withdraw that offer for now because we're gonna have to see what we can and can't afford really. So it's gonna be kind of difficult. So arbitration wise, I mean, we're gonna offer it to everybody, not Herman, unless it's like a 500, but everybody's gonna get arbitration. We're gonna have to see what's gonna go on there. Contracts luckily are all minor leaguers. So no big contract changes. It's just that arbitration I'm worried about. Alrighty, we lost Andrew Chafin. We're gonna go to Braves for AJ Minter, a very low contract. Um, we're going to trade Jake Junis because we do have Lozardo who we can bring up for that fifth pitching spot. Alrighty, you can see we're kind of in a pickle. Season three, we're at 72 million. We need to get rid of 22 million. Chapman and Olsen are just too good. We can't really lose them. So it's looking like Conforto may be a player we look to move. Maybe Paul DeYoung as well. Trey Mancini. Um, yeah, I mean... I feel like he's just a player we can't lose. You know what I mean? He had a down year last year, I know, but still, same with Matt Olson. Alrighty, one trade we're making is Daniel Mangden, Trey Mancini, and Bennett Denson, uh, that second baseman we signed in free agency last year for Kyle Freeland. We're going back to him. Um, 1.5 million compared to the 7 million we're trading away. We're losing a left fielder, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, so. I was looking at Fernando Tatis Jr. because he's only making a million this year. And I suggested a trade, including Paul DeYoung, and I accidentally accepted it like an idiot. So Paul DeYoung, Julio Urias, and a, a pitching prospect, Francisco Navarro, that we had in the first season was traded. I didn't really want to do that. It helps us out though. So Tatis was making two, De Jong was making four, so that's two million extra. That we, and then Urias was making four this year, so that's six million we got rid of. We still need to get rid of eleven million, and I don't. Realistically, I think, you know, Matt Chapman or Matt Olson has to go, unfortunately, which, which sucks, unless we, you know, because 
a lot of people are just making like a million, two million, small, small stuff. And it's it's really comes down to these two guys. Unless we trade away Conforto and Hicks and we try to find cheaper options at the closing and right field spot. So let's see if we can do that. And then we can keep Hicks or not Hicks. We can keep Chapman and Olsen. All right, we're going to trade Michael Conforto for Christian Stewart. Christian Stewart's going to take over in left. Dom Smith's so going to be the DH. We're going to move Matt Olsen to right, I think. And Voight's going to play first. We still are going to need to move a couple players. We're six million short. I have a feeling we're going to need to trade Trevor Williams and Jordan Hicks. All right, we're going to trade Jordan Hicks for Sir Anthony Dominguez. And I still think we're over just barely 3 million. I think it's got to be Trevor Williams. Maybe trade him for another pitcher. The thing is, he's so good. <laughs> um, all right, Black Blackburn, Triggs, and Herman for Barucky. And I think we're just like a million over. We're at 50 right now. We're going to need a backup catcher. Um, which, you know, we, we don't have, <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do, we got our five starters, we got our bullpen. Um, we have the shortstop that I'm going to call up guy stalker. We're going to move him up to the bigs and we're going to sign a catcher for cheap. Hopefully. Alrighty. One more trade. It should really get us within budget tanner anderson wei chung wang for dl hall please we've done it thank god all right we do need to call somebody up we're gonna call up a young guy yes we are we're gonna call him up or do we call him up we have the spot. I might do that. We're going to call up that closer to see how he does. He might do well. He might do poorly. We're going to find out. Hopefully he does well. <laughs> um, our bullpen has definitely taken a little bit of a hit. But I feel, I feel like we're still a very solid team. Chirinos, Williams, Freeland, Barucky. Our Baruki and Lozardo. Um, I mean, this is a tough, tough challenge. Very, very difficult. Like, this is very difficult. We brought in Mazzarocco. Like, this is very hard. This is probably the hardest rebuild I've ever done to stay within 50 million for the entire organization. That is super tough. Super tough. So, you guys can see we brought in Tatis. I showed you guys that trade. We have Chapman, Olsen, Stewart, Voigt, um, Smith. Yeah, Smith, and then Loriano. I oh man, this is tough. This is tough. So let's just quickly. Whew, we brought in Gregorio Rodriguez from free agency. He could potentially be brought up if something is needed. Uh, the guy we brought up was actually a free agent. He looked kind of decent. Um, everybody else really wasn't that important. We did have a couple decent prospects. Navoa was one. Um, I think there was one more. Villarreal was like a long-term player. And then Via is another one. He looks like he could be very good in the future. I showed you guys them. Oof, man, this one was tough. This one was tough. Let's see how season three plays out. Hopefully we can make the World Series. So season three, we made the postseason. We won the division again. 103 and 59, taking on the Indians in the divisional series. Whew. League leaders, you guys can see Tatis had triples. We really haven't won that many like awards. Um, gold gloves, really, but nothing like too crazy. But uh, Jeff McNeil has been a phenomenal pickup. A great leadoff hitter for us. We got Tatis Jr. hit 285. Obviously, his contract's going to jump up, but it worked out perfectly for us in this uh, Moneyball style rebuild. Matt Chapman. Probably could have traded him and got someone really good, but it's Matt Chapman. You can't take him away from the athletics. Same with Matt Olson. And, I mean, he's just a power hitting, just just monster. He's a monster. Christian Stewart, not too bad. You know, 25 homers, 96 RBIs. I will definitely take that um, 100%. Luke Voigt, solid. 
just what we needed from him. Dominic Smith, not too bad either. He's looking like a decent little left field option to pick up. Um, Loriano did very well. He's turning into a really solid hitter. And then we got, like, even Falefa did as well. Barreto, Stocker, and Mezzarocco. I mean, these two look like they could be our future um, second baseman slash shortstop. They won't cost that much for, like, that many seasons. That would work out perfectly. And then our pitching staff. These two are a great one-two punch. Freeland struggled a bit, Baruki struggled a little bit, and so did Lazardo. But um, it's looking like our bullpen kind of carried the way. 283, amazing. Floro, 356, not too bad. 437 is a little scary. Four is kind of scary. Five is definitely scary. 386, 285, yikes. And then uh, 491. So some, some really good, some really bad. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the team turned out, especially for 50 mil. It's a solid team. Definitely are going to be consistently changing a lot, but it's a solid team. So let's see how this series against the Indians goes. And we're facing elimination. Awesome. So let's do it. Quick manage. Let's get into it. Ricky Henderson field. Alrighty. I don't know. Really don't know. Kane's new. Colton Wong. Okay. Some new, some new additions to the squad for sure. A double. Come on, Olsen can't bring him home unfortunately nothing for us there all right we get out of it come on guys anything just get some hits come on <sighs> okay a single that's good a walk first and second christian stewart all right and they get the run in two run score come on come on we do get a double there anybody like just do something all right we get out of that okay come on tatis gets on can we steal second we do like come on guys we need to get these runs in we're gonna go to go to mentor allows the allows the hit we'll go floro gets out of the jam think all right so it's two run game still all right that's a good start that's not come on first and second one out yes kiner falefa that's what i'm talking about man that's where that's what we needed you to do um what am i doing here sir anthony dominguez come in do your job perfect chapman Anybody? Nothing? All right. Trevino, close the door. Please close the door. Yes. Perfect. All right. Last game. Here we go. Oh, man. Progressive field. Let's go Trevor Williams this time. See how things go for us. First and second one out. Come on, come on, come on. One run scores. Okay, only one run scores. Tristan McKenzie on the mound. Okay. All right, we get the run back. Tatis gets it there. Come on. You just got to... Just a sack fly. Just put it in play, man. All right, at least we did tie it. All right, hit by pitch. Okay. Anything. Oh, come on. Get out of this. All right, one run scores. We'll get it back. All right. Anything? First and second, Loriano. Come on, come on, come on. No. All right. That's it for Trevor Williams. Unfortunately, he's just too tired. We're facing a string of lefties. We're going to bring in Minter. Perfect. All right. Falefa gets on. Falefa's been the man. And just no one wants to help him out, unfortunately. All right. I'm putting my faith in Verrett. Two outs. All right. One run scores, though. Okay. Come on. Anybody. Why can't you just help me out here? Top nine. We're down two. Come on. Former former athletic Blake Trining comes in. Oh, man. Just had to be written this way, didn't it? Oh, man. Ooh, 
we just we just can't do it. We're close almost every single time and just this is close. And I mean I don't really want to talk about the squad too much because you're gonna have to consistently make changes. Do you do you stick around with Chapman? Do you stick around with Olsen? Do you let them go? Do you try to bring in maybe a little bit younger pieces, a little bit cheaper pieces to build around there? It's tough. It really is tough. It, it, man, this is this was hard. This was very, very hard. But I hope you guys did enjoy the money ball rebuild. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the video. If you're new and enjoyed the video, yeah, that's what's going on with me today. Also, make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you guys are notified whenever a video does go live. Like I did say, I'm trying to get two videos to you guys a day. And I want to make sure you guys see them all. So make sure you click that bell notification icon. Also in the comment section, do you guys think Moneyball would work nowadays? I really don't think it would. I think it would be too hard. A lot of people are asking for a lot of money. I think it'd be pretty difficult to work in today's majors. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.